Hey there folks, going to do a very quick market internal review. I uh, definitely <laughs> fell behind on these reviews, but quite honestly, for the most part, uh, I would be quite repetitive to tell you kind of all the same things. Um, previous TWAP range, the, the pink zone here, <clears throat> purple zone, is definitely something to continue to keep a, an eye out for. Keep your long short bias based on that range. If we're above, look for longs. If we're below, look for shorts. If we're inside, that is a uh, good chop signal. One thing I want to note, we have FOMC this week. Uh, another Jerome Powell meeting. So that's something that I believe the market may be waiting for. And one thing that has become apparent to me uh, over the past uh, month here of March so far and even February is the top stocks of the index, uh, specifically NASDAQ. I've really been watching them quite heavily and it's, it's quite apparent that their dominance in this market is certainly um, something to watch out for. They can certainly push the market even when the market breadth, that is the advancement decline of New York or NASDAQ, as well as the volume, the VOLD, uh, the volume pouring into the advancing or declining stocks. When those things are weak, I've often said in, in much older videos, it's a good time to walk away from the market until you, ser uh, until you see some alignment between SPY or the Qs and uh, in New York. But in here lately, I've been able to find some good opportunities uh, using the the top stocks index uh, indicator that I published a while back, and effectively, when you don't see alignment uh, with what MIT is showing you, look at the top stocks index uh, indicator. It is another market breadth indicator of sorts. It's just tracking a much smaller collection of stocks, as far as in count, but certainly not in uh, capital. These are the heavy hitters of the market. Uh, everybody should know these names if they've been trading Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, certainly quite popular. So highly encourage you to have this up here. You can see on the chart days where the top holdings are either bullish or bearish. We're usually seeing heavy follow through from SPY on those days. So it's not, it's not um, something I'm suggesting to, to give up on market breadth. Don't give up on ad. Don't give up on, on VOLD. It's just that when you don't see alignment to those things, certainly take a look at the top stocks. So I, I would keep them lower on the priority of what I would look for for alignment, but certainly do not uh, ignore them. So much of... This month uh, of March, as we finished out February with with a little bit of a, a nice up upwards move, we, we come back down pretty hard here on the, the 5th. We've had some CPI and other data releases that the uh, market's not been pleased about, but you can tell um, pretty much since end of, end of Feb, we had a low price on SPY of 505, and we've had a high price on SPY of 518. The market has essentially waffled through that range for over a week now. The uh, market is certainly waiting for probably the, the interest rate decisions or commentary on that matter. One thing of, of interest, so we see here March 7th, top stocks dominating the market, pulling the market up. We have a nice sell-off the next day. Next time we see top stocks showing more buy side and we get another rip day and today though while we did have a nice gap up we can see the market was holding high here for the top stocks uh, specifically nasdaq is pretty much stuck on all 10 of the stocks this indicator tracks here are in advancement meaning they're over their prior close but yet spy is somewhat coming down so that's a, an interesting thing to note, but we did have a massive gap up uh, of $4. So we had OPEX last Friday. That 
pretty much gave us that chop zone. And then today we had uh, very little participation in the market as a whole, I would say. So I think this gap really surprised maybe a, a, a you know subset of market participants, but that's all speculative. What I really see, though, and, and where I build the thesis of low participation is tick itself not seeing a whole lot of energy here. So even on OPEX being a chop day, we still saw many 500 breaks on, on the uh, upside and downside. Day prior to OPEX on Thursday, we certainly saw some quite extreme tick. We saw some uh, negative 1,000 prints, which we don't see a lot of that uh, lately with the VIX being as low as it's been. So today, you know, you can you should be able to tell it's very different from the prior two days of regular session hour um, trading. So that's another clear signal that the market is waiting. All right, so whoa. <laughs> uh, let's figure out what's going on. Oh, this is trend. I'm not going to worry about looking at that. All right, Vold chart. So Vold here prior to OPEX, massive sell volume. And then here, OPEX day, mostly chop. Okay, not much to write home about as far as the trend overall. I'm still holding, uh, you know, up upwards bullish uh, buy side kind of momentum until I start to see multiple days of this kind. You can see all the accumulation, obviously towards the downside, almost almost a duplicate of the actual indicator itself. So not really seeing any other days like that so far. So I'll continue to hold more of a bullish bias tick accumulation similar kind of look to vold obviously it's more nuanced with the actual price movement so we're going to see a little bit of of back and forth on this as each day transpires but overall tick accumulation was upside looking at the advancement price yet again followed the volume mostly on thursday and then uh, friday opex and then today mostly upside Definitely have had some downside days. Not uh, not too many. Uh, mostly balance, I guess, is what I could say. Most of these are... Majority are up, and then the ones that are down, for the most part, uh, we've had a couple aggressive days. <laughs> All right, so VIX. VIX has been flirting with higher numbers here lately. We have been holding above 14 for... I would say longer than than usual and we hit 16 uh, back on uh, monday march 11th so notice how fast we came back down to 13.5 and then kind of yeeted back up to uh, 15.5 so keep an eye out on that but i still don't think there's a whole lot of fear in this market here's the nya which is the the new york composite index again we can see since march 6th Maybe even a little further back, we've got same high, uh, same low kind of range. So the entire market is really, in my opinion anyways, pretty much stuck in this range. If we blow it up, we can take a look over at SPY. So SPY has been flirting with uh, breaking, uh, breaking below the monthly TWAP price. We did have that occur last Friday on OPEX, but we've done that three times prior and every time afterwards because we're in a range we're coming right back up so uh, it's uh it's it's somewhat neutral bullish i guess overall because we're inside the first standard deviation on the month and we're not really making good progress tech on the other hand i would say is is actually somewhat divergent i called this out on x last week i believe where tech is has been something again like i said i'm looking at nasdaq top holdings um, through the indicator i published i'm watching those stocks because i'm seeing a little bit of a divergence between the Qs and spy and uh, specifically i think that nasdaq is the, the weaker link here and i've been seeing a little bit more bullishness out of the dow and russell but eh, it's pretty light but here you can see with monthly twop we we've drug this sucker down flattened out but we've been making lower highs the whole time and now we've got this monthly gap that we've rejected multiple times like even today and uh last thursday where we had the big sell uh well in volume terms anyways we had the big sell prior to opex 
and then kind of acting like it's some kind of uh, market disease. We're not able to break back above that. So definitely something to continue to watch. As far as the Dow goes, again, I think this is following that big range we saw on the NASDAQ composite, or sorry, New York composite chart. And there's certainly, a, there's certainly uh, the Dow is certainly a big part of that, I believe. And, I mean, just look at this insane run they had over three just three days. They pumped seven bucks and literally in the next two days gave all that back. Just kind of stuck in that channel. And the Russell isn't really much different. Okay, so actually I retract what I said earlier. I thought Russell was stronger, but um, I have, a, I have a, uh, a put spread on them that's actually not been doing bad somehow. Um, I might want to go check that though, because I can't imagine it's still doing well uh, after today. Interesting. Okay. Well, so we've got Russell under monthly TWAP, Dow under monthly TWAP, Q's under monthly TWAP, and SPY is the only one above, just barely. So, I, I yeah, it's it's certainly all coming down to what is J Powell going to say. There's lots of commentary on whether or not there's going to be rate cuts this year, how many, when. So all of that's up in the air. The data continues to be released and showing somewhat different from what has been said in the past. And then, of course, we've got all of these after-the-fact revisions that aren't painting any uh, prettier of a picture, usually worse. So I'm tracking the, uh, the uh, pattern that I've been seeing 14-day roughly of different trends and uh, we had a high here at the end of this one and sure enough uh, a bit of a sell-off here we've got lows on the breadth indicator down here for the five-day sma on top holdings of all the uh, indexes and it looks like we're we're pretty much nearing a bottom on nasdaq temporarily perhaps who knows and dow so we'll see what that looks like but Perhaps we'll start to see some buying, and maybe SPY will start to break out into new all-time highs. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up, folks. I'm just kind of playing every day, day by day, and uh, we'll just have to continue to use the rules with uh, previous day uh, TWAP range for standard deviation. So longs above, shorts below, chops inside and uh, see what you can grab using MIT or any of the other tools. So I hope you appreciate this quick update. Leave a comment. I uh, really appreciate some of you guys been reaching out through uh, TradingView uh, chats and Discord and Twitter. It's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. So bring your ideas, bring any feedback, suggestions. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys later. Happy trading.